Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, if this is your first time here, hello, my name is Dan Floyd. I'm an animator. I've been working in the game industry for about eight or nine years, and I would like to play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild very incorrectly so we can learn things about it. I will explain what I mean, but if you are not interested, I have put timestamps below and you can click to skip ahead, but I'll try to make this fast anyway. So when you work in games, I find it is extremely useful to sometimes play a game, not to enjoy the experience, but to try to understand it better, to dissect it and analyze the component parts of it. It just really, it's a great exercise. I do it all the time for work. I do it for New Frame Plus as well, when I'm studying the animation in these games and trying to get footage of them for these videos. But I usually try to resist that urge to some extent anyway, when I am let's playing a game for Playframe, because when I'm playing something on Playframe, I'm trying to experience the game as intended and just enjoy the experience that the game provides. And the thing is, when you're trying to study a game and analyze it, oftentimes, in order to do that effectively, you need to intentionally not experience the game as it's intended. You need to play it weird. You need to sometimes do things that would just outright ruin the experience because that's not why you're playing it. You're trying to study the thing. And that would be pretty annoying for a lot of Playframe viewers and honestly not be a great way to experience a game for the first time, usually. So I avoid it on Playframe, but I was doing this exercise with some games uh, for work purposes recently and Carrie kind of mentioned offhand, you know, you could make a video or stream this. This is kind of interesting. So I thought, why not? Let's give this a try. I asked the patrons to suggest some games that they thought might be interesting subjects for this, and I went ahead and chose Breath of the Wild because it's a game that has all kinds of interesting things to study in it, and uh, at the end, y'all can tell me if this was cool and if you would like more of these. I guess consider this a pilot of some sort. Anyway, let's go ahead and start a new game. They're so comfortable with silence. It's a great start. It feels very different, just how empty it all is sonically, but just still kind of surprising. Okay, so we're at about at the point where I'd be running out here, and at some point, like, I would pass a threshold, and it would kind of kick into that intro cutscene where we get the big landscape shot. And they've set us up pretty nicely here by, like, teaching me to sprint which kind of encourages me to run forward into wherever that, like, little trigger point is. I'm wondering if, like, the camera at one point... If I have the camera pointed the wrong way, at what point does it kind of force it? If I'm, like, just crouch walking... Okay, right there. Right there it takes over. Earlier than I remembered. Worth it for this moment, though. How do NPCs react to you if you're not doing anything? Tracking me with his head. Then stops and kind of does a little fidget animation. Back to his idol. But he's not tracking me still. And he won't track me when he's doing that fidget animation, but then the tracking will kick back in. He's very patient. Can you hit him? Oh, you can! <laughs> yeah, I guess they do have to account for what the player might do in these situations, don't they? Oops. Um... Be on fire. No. You put up with a lot, sir. This is actually interesting. I'd not really noticed this before actively. Their, like, NPC chat system goes back and forth between leaving the camera in the player's control and having no camera control for the player. So, like, for, the, for these moments, I can move the camera around all I like. But for a couple of those lines there, they took camera control away. And then swapped it back to this. I can't... There's not a lot of games I feel like I run into that, like, alternate between the two. Usually, they either leave camera control completely in the player's hands, 
throughout the entire time. Sometimes they even leave like character control in the player's hands. Like if in Dark Souls, you can run up to a character, start talking to them, but then walk away if you want to. But yeah, like this this sort of interesting mix and match of developer directed camera alternating with the uh, player controlled one's interesting. Oh, see, there it goes. Ooh. And still no control for me. Oh, back in my control. I like that, actually. What other things can I do that you react to? I knew you reacted to the apple thing. I didn't know if the torch also counted. I do like that he has a... Huh. How many times can I talk to him? Because I, I just realized he's got a specific pose change for sitting, but turning to talk to someone behind him. Like, setting that hand behind him and, like, turning his head about as, about as like, far as the rotation as they'll allow to still look natural. Hmm. Then he goes back to this. So hang on. If I approach him and talk to him here, he stays in that pose and just sort of, like, turns his head and maybe shoulders slightly to face me. If I talk to him from back here... That's nice, new pose. It's just a small little detail that, like, no one, including me, notices. <laughs> what if I talk to him back here? That's kind of an awkward position. No, he just kind of, like, turns a little bit. Still probably another pose. I'm guessing that's not just a dynamic head and upper body rotation. It's nice, though. Nice little detail. So that's the benefit of doing little exercises like this. Games are made of so many, many, many component parts, many of which are kind of invisible or just hiding in plain sight that you don't even really think about them. Little stuff like the fact that they couldn't just make that idle pose for the uh, for the stranger there and the little fidget animation of him stoking the fire, which by itself was a nice little additional touch they didn't have to do. It was just kind of nice. They've also got the head tracking system on him, which is sort of automated. Same sort of thing that uh, Link has on him. But they also had to make uh, some poses for turning to face somebody who talks to him from, like, behind or something. And that's the sort of, like, little additional animation support and work that you probably won't notice. But it just adds an extra little feeling of polish that's kind of invisible and makes it all just feel slightly better somehow. I also really, really love their choice. It's not right for every single game, but it's 100% right for Breath of the Wild. The choice to just have picking up an item or a weapon or an object or anything be instantaneous. Link does not have to crouch and like grab the thing and play a whole animation to pick a thing up. That is what a lot of games kind of, like, feel the obligation to do. And I can understand it. Like, as an animator, I feel like, oh, that's an action of the player doing a thing. There needs to be an animation for that. But it can get so frustrating when you're picking up a million things. Well, bad example. Hang on. That's a thing I can't put in my pocket. Other things. Like... That. <laughs> I do love the freeze frame. Well, sort of freeze frame. The world simulation and the wind and all that stuff are still happening. But Link is just... Frozen in time. Where's more stuff I can pick up? Here we go. But yeah, just the uh, the system of just having Link instantly pocket it to where I can just keep on moving and not have to stop or slow down is so nice. Like, they do play a tiny little animation. If you just hold still, there is an animation for it, but it's not one that interrupts anything. It's just an upper body additive thing where... Oh, it didn't even do it that time. Sometimes he does. Hang on, I saw another animation that sometimes played. Let me see if I can make it happen. Where he puts a thing in his pocket. No. I've seen him do it. Come on. No, not right now. Link, do the thing. There. I wonder what makes the difference between something he does put in his pocket versus something he doesn't. Maybe it's item size? Hmm. Huh. But yeah, like that upper body thing might play, but if his upper body is doing some other animation, like the aiming or sprinting or something and like swinging his arms much more wild and you just grab something while you're running that upper body 
put thing away in pocket animation will probably just get completely overridden. Link doesn't have any sort of, like, idle fidget in this game, does he? That still sort of surprises me. It's not that it's a problem, of course. It's just, uh, Link has had those kinds of animations in past games, like, even as far back as Ocarina, like, you had all those little animations that'll happen if you just leave Link standing there and he'll, like, tap the toes of his boots against the ground, or sort of, like, uh, pull up his belt a little bit, or like, stretch and yawn, like, those sorts of things. Or, like, in Mario's case, he'll, uh, sit down and park on the ground and eventually fall asleep and that sort of thing. And Link does nothing. Again, not a problem, just sort of a missed opportunity. Those are great little characterizing details that you can throw in that just makes the character feel a little more alive and themselves, and like someone who's not just this... <laughs> this puppet you're in control of all the time. It's a tiny little opportunity for self-expression on a player character. And it feels like that's the sort of detail that a Nintendo would normally put in, and it makes me think that there's some specific reason that they'd avoid it here. And I have no idea what that would be. Do they freeze time of day in the early tutorial zone? It seems like they must have, because I've been running around for like a half an hour now, and it is still very much day right now. I think they must. It's not a bad, like, idea. It does mean they have a little bit more control over just the look of the world during this formative, this, like, formative hour or so. Where you're wandering around. The light and color and all that sort of remains somewhat consistent. You know, let's just look at Link's movement for a little bit. Because something that's interesting to me about uh, animation in Zelda games is how... There's a lot more polish and just aesthetic appeal to the animation in a lot of other Nintendo first-party games. Like, Mario's animation in Super Mario Odyssey is super charming and has tons of characterizing detail in it and really polished. And this all works. It's just very basic and simple. They're not doing anything super fancy to make things blend really nicely. And it can look silly sometimes. I do love the detail of having it to where if you just keep jumping, he does alternate which leg he's doing, so it's sort of like a, a bounding spring. A silly frolic. But yeah, he just kind of like snaps into and out of the starting and resting position. Like he does have a little bit of like a kickoff start walking animation. And it almost just snaps from walking to running. Like there's not a blend at all. It is like a little bit if you really carefully like slowly tilt it. But you gotta go real slow and easier, he'll just kind of snap to it. Which makes him feel more responsive, which, so it's like, that's probably good. Especially for this kind of game. Ellie in The Last of Us would feel really weird and unnatural, and like, that would feel wrong and busted. With that sort of very realistic looking game and character. But Link is stylized enough to where you can get away with it. And it results in a more precise feeling of control over the character. But yeah, like, all of these individual animations look perfectly fine. Standing idle? Totally fine. Uh, crouched idle? Totally fine. The sneak walk looks quite nice, I like this. The walk looks good. A little bit stiff. And a little bit like, his center of gravity is very, like, floaty. It feels like he's trying to balance, like, a plate on his head or something. There's just like a real unnatural smoothness, like he's... <laughs> ...being very careful with this walk. But the run feels nice, and that's what you're gonna see most of the time. And doggone it, your run animation better look good. It's what the player is going to be staring at 90% of the time. <laughs> if that looks bad, boy. And there's like no anticipation to the jump. Again, probably the right choice in this case. He just, boom, he's up in the air instantly. <laughs> and just, yeah, that like, the follow through is just so abrupt when he lands at a stop. He just snaps back to idle so fast. Like, they could have a longer settle there and just have him- and have that animation get interrupted if you started moving him again. I wonder why they're so... very... functional and abrupt, just like no flourishes, no... trying to add some extra characterizing texture or anything there, it's just very robotic, like... <laughs> There's a lot of room for improvement, it feels like, in the animation in Zelda games. And a few of the games in the series, especially with the more exaggerated looking Link, have had some really nice flourishes. Wind Waker Link tends to look pretty good and cute, and there's a lot of characterizing detail in there. Breath of the Wild Link is just very... 
I want to call it all business, but that in itself kind of suggests characterization that I don't think is actually here. Like, I think you could describe this sort of like rigidity as as being sort of like in character for this very castle guard, serious, all business link. I don't think that that's what this is. I think that there are better kinds of animations and better touches you could do that would feel more appealing and real to uh, sell that. If an animator showed me this as the system for like, oh yeah, he snaps right into place and then gave me the justification. Oh, it's because he's like, he's it's all business. He's like, he's a castle guard. He's very serious. I would say, yeah, good try. Do it again. <laughs> I would say it a lot nicer than that, but that is what it would boil down to. <laughs> this is such a doofy sprint. This That pumping of the arms. <laughs> And this I do love, that like having him, that exaggerated sort of, I'm so tired if you let him stand still. Like this, <laughs> he's like working so hard to run. He's like, ah, I gotta go fast. Oh, I'm late. Oh my gosh. Ah, 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 ah. And then if you just let him rest, he's like, ah, ah, I gotta pass out and die. I'm okay. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's a nice little touch there. That little, okay, I'm better. Let's go. That's great. See, they've got little cute details and touches like that while the rest of this is just so perfunctory. It makes me very curious for the sequel, when the sequel comes. Because now, like, so much about this game is a big new experiment for them. But yes, it is, like, going back to a lot of old design principles and approaches to Zelda from the old days. But as a 3D Zelda game, this is so new and such an experiment. And there's so many new things they're having to figure out, which is very risky. Now that they've kind of figured out what Breath of the Wild is, how it works, how this kind of Zelda game works... I'm wondering if there's going to be a lot more attention paid to little touches in, like, the animation set. There are so many things that are made easier working on a sequel to a game, right? Because when you know what the final game is kind of meant to look like, what that rough shape is, then you can start planning around that vision. Whereas when you're making a new thing, like, a game that's still in progress is kind of hard to understand until it's all come together and everyone so suddenly recognizes, okay, this is kind of cool, I think we got a game here, now we just got to improve this idea. And now that they've got the idea, and it's established, and they can just start thinking of ways to improve on it, that's a kind of exciting time. Really nice posing on his attacks, too. Reads nice and clearly, to just about any angle. Which, that's also just, like, always a trick with game animation. At least in film, you've got one camera you gotta make things look good to. In game animation, it's gotta look good from everywhere. At least if the player's gonna have control of the camera, which they usually do. What happens if you choose to just drop stuff from your inventory? Like, can you? Can you drop things? Okay, so you can drop it from here. You can't drop something from your inventory, but you can hold things. It's really cute how he's got an upper body animation modifying his run for holding things in his hands. And he's not holding them specifically, obviously. He's just sort of like... He's got a pose here, and he's got a pose here, and whatever happens to be in his hands will just sort of fit in that spherical space between them all, whether it looks right or not. <laughs> it's more just kind of hovering in his hands, really, but that's fine. It's a simplification. It gets the idea across. This is also very clever. I just realized a thing that they... Maybe this wasn't intentional, but I suspect it was. So I'm right about at the tower, uh, the first tower that you raise. That gives you a whole little... Oops, I forgot that I was missing an item here. Hold up. Hit. Stop. Stop blocking. Stop blocking. Quit it. Quit it. Quit it. There we go. I just... I'm about about the tower where there's going to be a whole scene that happens. Several scenes, in fact. And I picked up a whole lot of junk, uh, random sticks and clubs and things like that in my exploration before getting here. But right before getting to this tower, they've placed an enemy that is holding... A sword and shield, which you're probably going to equip, because it's probably the strongest thing you've found if you've not wandered way off the path so far. And uh, you haven't really had a shield till this point, so now you got one. Now you're feeling a little bit more classically Link. So that when this scene happens, and you are shown wielding various things, you're going to be actually looking... You're not going to be carrying something doofy, or you might be, but odds are good that a new player is probably going to equip stuff that feels classically Link right before you get to this little scene here where it's going to show your character doing and holding stuff. Like, you could have a little bony arm grabbing around, or could you? Actually, I don't know if you can run into a skeleton guy at this point in the game, but... <laughs> it's clever.
Did they pre-render this bit? And maybe they didn't. It feels like that would solve a lot of technical issues. They must have. Or set up something very, very clever. The fact that we're not seeing any, like, random pop-in as they're suddenly loading into a new part of the map and a whole bunch of assets that haven't been, like, loaded up yet pop into frame instantly. Like, that had to be frame rendered or something. Or using some real, real, real clever hack. Because, like, pre-rendered doesn't necessarily have to mean fancy CG. It can literally just mean something taking place in the engine, but you rendered it out so that the game doesn't have to try to process and run all of it and make it perform in real time. Sometimes if you got to do something really fancy or make the camera leap around to a whole bunch of different places in the world, or, or if you just want to be able to load something in the background while that story scene's happening, sometimes pre-rendering is just the best, easiest fix. Especially if it's not going to involve any variable elements, like they can't pre-render anything that has Link in the shot, because Link could be wearing or wielding anything. So, you can't pre-render that. <laughs> this is all in real time and engine. I would really love somebody who knows a whole lot more about, uh, kind of the nuts and bolts of game graphics. Like, like the Digital Foundry guys, I would love for them to do, and maybe they have done this and I just didn't see it, some sort of, to have some sort of conversation talking about Breath of the Wild compared to Pokemon Legends Arceus, which does attempt to do a big open world where it just looks a lot uglier. They just didn't have the time to kind of like figure out how to make long distance views look still beautiful, even though they are dead simple. I mean, look how simple that terrain out there is. Look how few elements there actually are once you you don't even have to get that far away. It's just like a bunch of probably that those might be 2D trees. Are they? I cannot tell if those are tree billboards, but they might be. Literally, the trees closest to us might be built 2D billboards. I think they are. Now this makes me like a bit boundary break did an episode on this. If you've not watched... Okay, so what I'm doing right here, this little pilot video series, is me just kind of like running around and exploring and looking for stuff, uh, which is the sort of thing that people who make channels like Boundary Break or Game Maker's Toolkit or other such folks undoubtedly do while they are in the process of researching and writing videos to then present all of their findings in a nice, tightly edited sort of fashion. And if you've not found uh, Boundary Break before, I recommend it. It's a channel in which the creator just like gets control of the game camera by whatever means necessary and takes it out of bounds and just like figures out. Usually they're kind of like looking for interesting secrets or like, I wonder what this character who never takes their helmet off looks like, like what's their face look like? But sometimes you can off you can often see like a lot of interesting level design and game making tricks when you can see a, uh, a level map laid bare and you can see what's ha hiding just out of frame and where different elements go when they disappear from the from the map for a bit or like it could be really educational i highly recommend checking that channel out if you've uh, if you've enjoyed this at all and not heard of them yet and i'm not talking about the climbing right now which is arguably one of the most interesting things about the animation in this game because i already did i made a whole video about it on new frame plus the other channel i do where i do actual video essay type stuff I will link to it in the corner. I get way more in-depth. I don't even know if I recognized when I first played the game that I could move the camera at any point. And sometimes I guess it's kind of to the, uh, <laughs> to the detriment of the moment. Even though I suspect if I hit the button, it's going to cut to a, uh, <laughs> game-controlled camera pointing at the thing they're pointing at. Having this text box pop up where he points in a direction, Link turns to look in a direction, but I cannot. I could have it just look over here if I want to. What's going on in the sky? But uh, I suspect that as soon as I hit A, there we go. And that's a nice shot too. Oh, wow. I can actually be a jerk and disrupt his path. 
he's got like a scripted event happening where he like this conversation ends and he walks up to the top of the thing to show me something but I can get in his way and kind of throw him off course a little bit and then he tries to get around me whoa look at all this I would have guessed that like if I tried to bump into him he just would have kept on going and kind of like pushed me out of the way and now I can't push him anymore now he's locked in place <laughs> still though I'm surprised now that I'm seeing this in action, though, I kind of, like, I feel like I want to see more 3D third-person games use this camera treatment of bouncing between player-controlled camera and not player-controlled camera when they want to show something specific. Like, if you just kind of effortlessly bounce back and forth between the two, like this, this works really well. What happens if I stand right in front of him where that arm is about to extend? It, I'm guessing the arm is going to just clip right through Link. I'm guessing they didn't account for it. Let's see if I'm right. Yes, okay. <laughs> it's almost comforting that they didn't go to the trouble. It would not have been worth it. That's too much work for not good enough reason. There are so many better ways to spend those development hours making a good video game than accounting for that stupid little edge case. There's fish in this water, yeah? How do they, like, react to you? Do they just, like, kind of swim away and disappear, or do they just swim away and move? What do they do? Hey, fish, I'm invading your space. Hey, fish. All right, you're swimming away, you're swimming away. Are you ever disappearing, though, or are you just trying to get away from me? I think you're just trying to get away from me. I appreciate that I can also just hit A if they're nearby to just collect them. <laughs> Keep it simple. Ah, I missed my chance. Nice little swimming animation. I better hurry, I'm gonna drown. Quick, Link! Quick! There we go. I'm okay. He's alright, folks. Oh, that's a nice touch, too. I'd not even notice that. If you hit the jump button right as you hit the ledge going into water, he actually does do a dive animation instead of a jump. Nice touch. Good little detail. They didn't have to do that. You know, another thing I really like, I like that they don't have Link snap to the front of a chest to play a standard uh, chest opening animation, regardless of where you are when you have him open the chest. He'll just do some sort of appropriate animation for, like, kind of miming opening the chest, or maybe even just do nothing. Like, he'll just kick it. That works. Perfect. Sometimes he'll, like, reach down and kind of fiddle with it with his hands. Sometimes he'll just kick. I like that. Oh, hey, time of day kicked in. I guess once you finish the first shrine, they finally start letting the uh, time of day change. Oh, yeah, and you can see the weather and the time down at the bottom right now. It's like they're not only slowly teaching you how to play and the mechanics of the world, they're also just really slowly introducing the simple simulation of the world, too. Just adding little tiny complexities bit by bit. Like, I I'm willing to bet it probably never rains up here on this plateau. Or if it does, it does only in very specific areas of it. Because, like, rain introduces a new complication, right? Like, rain makes climbing darn near impossible. Or at least very miserable to do. And they wouldn't want to do that in the tutorial space when you're still kind of learning the ropes. So I'm willing to bet the weather up here never changes. Even if you're, like, late game, if you've left the plateau, I bet if you come back up here, it still doesn't rain or anything. You know, if there is one, like, animation criticism that I would level at Breath of the Wild, and it's, it's nitpicky, but I think it actually does have an impact, I really think Breath of the Wild Link needs to be more expressive. He, his facial expression range is so limited and bland, and they don't do much with it. There's some other characters in the game, like other NPC main characters who are fairly expressive, and fairly expressive in scenes, and he'll get kind of expressive in scenes, but he does still seem very... Even in the full story cutscenes, his expressive range feels, as I recall, really limited, where he's just kind of, like, pretty straight-faced a lot of the time. And especially, like, now that we've had Wind Waker Link, who is so expressive all of the time, even just during gameplay, this just feels like a big step back. 
Like it, it doesn't have to be as expressive as Wind Waker Link, but there's a there's a wide range of expressive potential between Wind Waker Link and whatever this is. Oh. Didn't know you crashed back here later on. That's probably normal. I just don't think I stumbled upon it on my own. Can I please just have the paraglider? I got more stuff I want to look at. Oh wait, there's a fire outside. You can pass time at fires? I forgot a lot about this game, apparently. That would have been good information to remember when I was trying to record footage for the New Frame Plus episode. I wasted a lot of time just waiting for a time of day that had nice lighting and good weather for a lot of mountain climbing shots so that the footage could look nice. <laughs> Whatever, let's look at cooking. Let's see. So you put stuff in his hands, he holds it, which is cute, and then you can cook. And this is so charming as a cooking animation, I love it. I love that they don't try to do anything realistic or naturalistic or anything at all. He just throws stuff in a pot, it dances around in the pot, <laughs> and then it's done, and he's happy, and like, I assume wiping the drool from his mouth from his excitement. See, like, that's, like, that's a cute expression, but his eyes are still so very, like, it's like his brows are hitting a good, sort of doing a good thing, his mouth is hitting a nice shape, but his eyes just stay very kind of neutral. There's, like, a weird dead-eyedness to Link's face by default a lot of the time, and I don't know why that is. He's looked more expressive and alert in so many other Zelda games. I can't quite put my finger on what it is. It's an expression, but it's not... Something about it is not all the way there, and I can't tell what exactly. See, like this. This would be a good opportunity if... Well, here, I'll put the weapon away. This would be a great opportunity to have some sort of little idle animation, like a contextual sort of animation where uh, he could just sort of like look like he's trying to kind of keep his balance going. Kind of like Aloy does in Horizon Zero Dawn, right? Like, she's not going to fall. She's keeping her balance, but it shows an, an awareness of the environment and her place in it that makes her feel more alive and reactive and responsive. And there is kind of like a little bit of sort of like a carefulness to his walking when he's on this narrower surface. I don't think this is exactly how his walk looks normally. Oh, here, let's find out. Yeah, so that run, too, also had sort of like a, all right, arms out to the side, balance a little bit. That's nice. But his idol is then just back to like, standard. I, um, you need something? Was this your favorite tree? Oh no, you've just got like a daily schedule going on, don't you? And see, now I do want to get to like other villages and stuff and see what villagers do at different times of day. I bet he's got some like different poses and idols for talking to me. Oh, he just kind of, like, stands stock still if I get close. That's smart. That way they don't have to do some fancy, like, turning to face me in a specific direction while also still chopping the tree. <laughs> this simplifies things. Smart. Just as soon as I get within a certain range, stop your current activity and turn to face me. Yep. Smart. Smart solution. I do really wish that our industry wasn't so secretive with the like process of making games and all the little stuff like this i completely understand why they are but it's a bummer because i know like there's loads of developers would love to talk about the clever things they did making any individual game and the stuff they worked on and the challenges they overcame and tricks they figured out There's another interesting video that came out, I think, a year or two ago. Uh, and I'm forgetting the name of it. I will link to it in the corner. Kind of talking about the problem, like the many problems with how we talk about games and the, like, from the press to the, like, gaming audience to developers, just every different kind of part of it and the different conflicting motivations at play and just the, the problems it leads to. 
and I don't really have a good solution. Like, <laughs> the creator of that video doesn't really have a good solution to that problem, and I certainly don't either. The problems all make sense. But it does result in a scenario where a lot of devs and game studios just kind of stay pretty tight-lipped a lot of the time. And what they do reveal is pretty tightly controlled and sometimes very carefully curated. And it's a bummer. Okay, but see this. This I love. He's so cold. <laughs> see, this is expressive. Like, there's little flashes of expressiveness in there. <laughs> and it can read in his eyes a little bit more than it does, but this is really nice. And I don't know why, it, like, and the fact that it even works here in this menu is so cute. That's adorable. That's perfect. <laughs> I really, really love it. It does make me wonder why they don't have him do just, like, little fidgets and idles still while he's just standing there, though. Like, I guess you could kind of argue that it makes it more noticeable that there's a sharper contrast between him doing nothing and him being in a state like this. I'd argue I don't think fidgets are going to make it not immediately apparent that he's shivering when he starts shivering. I don't... I don't think that that's enough of a reason or enough of a need, but... That's, like, literally the only thing I can think of. Do you have to cook these for them to work? If so, I may be... Oh, I do have to cook it. Oh, dear. We may die in the cold. Tough break, Link. Hey, fellas, can I borrow your fire? I need it to not die. Just gonna go hang out near the fire, if you guys don't mind. I feel safer. Yeah, you just catch on fire. No, not your weapon. And definitely don't ignite this stuff, okay? Okay, nope, nope, that's... I'd, I'm gonna stand back, all right, bud? Don't think I can cook here, but... Still alive, though. Actually... Maybe I can't, like, officially cook, but maybe I can still drop stuff in the fire. Still an acorn. That makes sense. We'll make it. But I really hope you have the thing I need. I thought you gave me, like, a shirt or something. Thank you. Cutting it close. Whew, that's better, though. And it's nice. It's nice that you can just see the state change right here in the menu. Dying? Gonna make it. <laughs> Ooh, boy. It really is impressive how much the absence of music... Like, I... I tend to really enjoy other Zelda games having music playing more frequently, but the absence of it really leaves a whole lot of room for the ambience of the space. And the sound of wind and grass and crickets, wild animals, other stuff. Like, it just, uh... There really is more of a sense of place and atmosphere as a result of the music not kind of uh, taking charge of the entire soundscape. Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Considering that I could not save my What is it that makes him look so dead-eyed all the time? I can't put my finger on it. Link. Is it just that there's barely any movement of the pupils? But I or rarely? Here. Do they just never seem like they're focused on a point of interest? My daughter. Is it like where the pupils Your are set in the eyes? Like or like Ganon. how the eyelids are? I can't put my finger on what exactly looks off about his face all the time. The but Link's face village. just always feels like a part of it is not expressing. And it's something she in the eyes. More about the path that lies ahead. Catch! That was a little close, but oh boy. Better move, better move, better move. Ah, <sighs> doesn't that look nice? It sure does. And yay, we got the thing! Ah, finally the world opens up. I hope you've enjoyed this. I don't know if this is enjoyable to watch, but if it is, let me know. Uh, if you want to see more of it, by all means, uh, we could we could come back to Breath of the Wild. There certainly is a lot more to the game and a lot more things to kind of explore and look at now that we're off of the tutorial plateau. Or we could just go look at some other kind of game. Just for funsies. Whatever. Let me know in the comments down below if you like it. This could also be the sort of thing that works better as a stream. Like, uh, we're meaning to kind of get properly set up to be doing streaming on Twitch at some point. Maybe this would be a good kind of thing to be doing on a, on a stream now and then instead. 
and then maybe editing it down for YouTube stuff. I don't know. We're figuring it out. It's a pilot. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you again for another time for something else. Dumb. Ah, dang. Well, that's my cue. See you later. Thanks for watching the thing. Goodbye!